to three openings. Exodus 33, verse 18 to verse 22 of Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33, verse 18, down to verse 23. If you are there, say yes. This was a conversation between Moses and God. He was praying. And so there was a conversation I read. Verse 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. May our prayer be this morning, Lord, show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cleave of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my, my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. The book of Job chapter 22. I'll read from verse 21 to 27. Job 22. Play just silently for me. Job 22. Verse 21 to 27. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thy heart. If thou return to the Almighty, Thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. And the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty. And shall lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. And he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vows. Hebrews 1 verse 1 to 3. The book of Hebrews chapter 1. I'm reading the third book this morning. The book of Hebrews chapter 1. And now we read from verse 1 to 3. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, at in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed here of all things, and by whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory. And the express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power. 
when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Let me stop there. By the grace of God this morning, and for a couple of weeks, I will be ministering to us on the subject of title, Walking in the Glory of Newness. Everybody say, Walking in the Glory of Newness. Look at your neighbor, say, You can walk in the glory of newness. Look at someone that cares to believe. Say, you can walk in the glory of newness. Lord, we submit everything into your hand this hour. We are that you will take your place in this service. Let your beauty be seen and noticeable through your word this morning. Speak to us in the language we can all understand. Move upon our life. Walk in our hearts. Walk in our mind. Oh God, touch us in a special way. Let your name alone be magnified. Thank you God for speaking through this mouth of clay. Thank you Lord for delivering the mystery of the kingdom. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Walking in the glory of newness. Before anyone can walk in the glory of newness, one important thing that everyone should take note of and should know is that God desire that we should know him. One of the names God is called in the Bible is called the King of Glory. It's also called the Lord of Glory. The scripture tells us concerning Jesus in Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. The scripture tells us that in Christ, he said Christ in us is the hope of glory. He said Christ in you is the hope of glory. Colossians 1 27. Tells us that Christ in you is the hope of glory. I'll be telling you more about glory and what connect to it by the grace of God next week. But this morning before any one of us can walk in God's glory because that glory is God himself. God desire that the people who want to walk in glory should know the God of glory. We can be in church and not know the God of the church. We can be serving God and not know the God that we serve. Jesus made a statement in John chapter 4, verse 22, 23. He said, you worship, you know not what. He said, for salvation is of the Jew." It's possible to wash and not knowing God that we wash. It's very important for you to know that God has a desire for all of us, myself included. And the desire is that I want you to know me. That desire spans from the Old Testament to New Testament and up to now. In our days, it's hard to know who knows God. It's difficult. To know the one that knows God. The Bible recorded. In the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Paul said that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. God wants us to know him. Knowing him is important to our life and destiny. Many have substituted religion to knowing God. Many have substituted service to knowing God. And that's why many people's service are not acceptable. Because if you don't know the God you are serving, there is tendency for you to give him a wrong service. The scripture tells us in Leviticus chapter 10, Nadab and Habib, 
the sons of Aaron. They went into the house of God to sacrifice unto God. The Bible recorded that they set up a strange fire before the Lord. And when they set up a strange fire, the scripture tells us that another fire came from the Lord and killed them. Why? Because they gave God what God did not require. Listen to me this morning. Quite a number of Christians give God what he does not require. Quite a number of um, uh, of believers give God what God does not require. In fact, many people treat God with disdain. Thinking that maybe he's God. I cannot see him. Whatever I give to him, let him just take. Let me tell somebody this morning, God does not just take anything. He takes what is prescribed, not what we want to give him. Everything that God wants in the Bible has been stated down, and he expects us to give him what he desires and what he wants us to give him. So this morning, I'm speaking on knowing God. Getting to know God is important to our lives, to our destiny, to our eternity. And every child of God should take note that the desire of God for you as an individual and as a family is that he said, I want you to know me. I want you to know me. It's not every wife that knows God. It's not every husband. It's not every pastor that know God. It's not every deacon. It's not every HOD that know God. It's not every church worker that know God. God is craving for his knowledge. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, I am the Lord. I change it not. God does not change, but he wants his people that can change to know him. He wants us to know him. He cannot change. It's all we have. And we need to know that. The scripture tells us in Colossians chapter 1 verse 19, the Bible says God has played, he said, please the Lord, the Father, that in him should all fullness dwell. All fullness. I'll be explaining that to you next week. God wants us to know him. He wants us to know Jesus, the Son of God. He wants us to know him. It's an eternal journey that you and I have to make. And I can assure you, it's an interesting journey. And when you get to know him, you will discover that in the light of his knowledge, everything is nothing. When we get to know him. And that is the desire of God for every child of God. Now, that word know, what does it mean? The word know means to have understanding of. To have understanding of. Understanding is a wellspring of life. Proverbs 16, 22. Unto him that have it. God wants us to have understanding about him. Understanding is a wellspring of life. Unto him that hath it. But the instruction of fool is folly. He wants us to have understanding about him understanding of him and insight about him. Psalm 82 verse 5 said they know not, they understand not, they walk on in darkness. May you never walk in darkness. Amen. Let me hear a bigger amen. amen. God wants us to know him. When you know him, you will not be walking in darkness with regard to your life and with regard to your destiny. Because the Bible says in him was life. And the life is the light of man. John chapter 1 verse 4. The light shineth in darkness. Darkness cannot comprehend it. When you know him, your life will be opened up to you. God will make sure he opens your life up to you. 
I pray this day for everyone in a state of confusion with regard to their life and destiny and future. May the light of God shine upon your life. I say, may the light of his glory shine upon your life. The world no mean to be aware of. To be aware of. Jacob was taking a trip, running away from his brother. Genesis chapter 28. And he got to a place, he slept. He used a stone as a pillow. And he started dreaming in that place. That must be a very sound sleep. Using a pillow. Some of us use something soft and we cannot dream anything. This man used a stone for a pillow and he started dreaming. And he saw a ladder stretched from the heart to heaven. And on top of the ladder was the Elohim, the ancient of days. And the angels were ascending and descending on that ladder. And suddenly he woke up and he said, God is in this place and I know it not. You know many people, God is in a church, but they don't know. They are not aware of. They are forgotten that God said where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Can you let God, let, some, let your neighbor know, say God is here. You don't need to feel him. Feeling is not knowing. You don't need to feel him, but his presence. Say God is in this place. And I know it not. It's very important for us to know that we need to get awareness to be aware of God. Have, create a presence of God around your life anywhere you find yourself. Be aware of Him. So to know me to be aware of. To know also me to be familiar with someone. To know me to be familiar with him. God wants you and I to get familiar with God. There's a difference between being a religious person and being a friend of somebody. Abraham moved from being someone who is just a religious person to a friend of God. God said, Abraham, my friend. Whenever God, when God wanted to destroy the land of Sodom, God said in Genesis chapter 19, 18, 19, he said, will I do a thing without, without telling my servant Abraham? See, it will become a great nation. God remembered to reveal secret to Abraham because he was not just a, a religious person, he was a friend of God. The Bible called Abraham his own friend. Why? Because Abraham got familiar with God. All of us need to know that God is craving for our relationship, for our friendship. God is waiting for every man, every woman to get familiar with him. The word no also means to have a clear perception of someone. A clear perception. You can get a, a, a wrong perception of somebody Oh, that person is this. That person is tough. That person is hard. That person is bad. But you see, until you get close, you cannot really have a clear understanding of the individual that somebody has told you about. God is asking you and I to get close. Tell your neighbor, say, get close. Get close. Get close. You need to get to know the God whom you are calling. The God whom you are visiting. You can be visiting church and not know the God of this church. Just on a religious basis. But when somebody who is familiar with God comes to church, the focus of that person is clear. I am going to church not to see pastor. Not to see the wife of pastor. Not to see my business partner. Not to see the CA or any of the minister. I am going to church to see who? God. May you see him. I said, may you see him. God is calling. You and I for a relationship. 
which is based on clear perception of him. To know also means to be aware of true observation. When you want to know somebody, you get close, you look at the way he does some things. When Jesus called the disciples to himself, the Bible says he called them that they might be with him. To be with him is to, sub, to observe him. Observe the way he does things. Observe the way he preach. He heal the sick. Observe the way he talk. He relate with people. He said that they may be with him and that he might send them out to preach the gospel. Until you know him, you cannot preach for him. If you preach for him, your world will not have impact. Because the person you are talking about, you don't know him. The sons of Skivas, in Act 19, they saw a demonized man. In Act 19, and they went to that demonized man because they saw Paul casting out demon. They thought that they also can cast the demon out. So they went to the demonized man and said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached, we command you to come out of him. The Bible tells us that the demonized man leaped upon them. Everybody say leaping. Now that leaping means he jumped on them. Seven of them, he wounded them and the Bible said they fled from him wounded. The demon now said, taught them a lesson forever. He said, Paul, like Jesus I know. Paul, I know, but who are you? I know Jesus. I know Paul, but I don't know you. Listen to me this morning. It's very important for you to start a journey and stop playing religion. A journey of an endless knowing of God who made you. And that's what God wants me to share with you in these few weeks. It's a journey of knowledge. God wants us to be aware of him through observation. He also wants us, the one know me to recognize. Everybody say recognize. Recognize him. When God is the one at work, you recognize him. You recognize it. This is God at work. This is what God is doing. The word know also means to identify. Identify. When a little child comes in, as I looking around, looking for the mother, a little child will not go, who has grown up enough, to another person's mother. She will look, he or she will look for his own mother because she was able to identify the mother. Jesus said, you worship, you know not what. For salvation is of the Jew. He said, those who worship the father must worship the father in spirit and in what? And in truth. It's important for us to get to know our father. Identify him in your life. The word no also means to experience. To experience him. When you have experienced God, it will be shown in your life. Acts chapter 4 from verse 13. The apostles, they find themselves in the midst of the Sahendri, the workers, the rulers of that time. The Bible recorded that when the Sahendrin, the Pharisees and so many of them, the rulers of that time, when they observe them, they look at them. These are an unlearned people. They did not go to school. They are not lettered people. But they look at them. The Bible says they perceive that they were unlearned and ignorant men. That was Peter, James, and John, all the, the apostles of Jesus. But they marvel. Everybody said they marvel. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with who? Another version says 
they look at them, they observe what being with Jesus has turned their life to. If, what, if you have been with Jesus and you have experienced Jesus, they will know it. You don't need to say, I belong to God. You don't need to make noise. By your life, they will see it. Shortly before the convention got kickstarts, <laughs> I just remember myself and my protocol officer went, I just went to make a look at the hotel where the guests will stay just to have a look. As I enter, God spoke to a man, he was there. He said, this is an anointed man of God. He had not known me. So in the process of discussion, my protocol now said, Pastor, hey, hey. The man now said, hey, hey. He got to know by revelation. I've never met him. He has never met me. But he was talking out based on what he saw. He said, this is an anointed man of God. I was just walking. I did not do miracle. I did not wave my hand. I mean, he was there. He said, this is an anointed man of God. And like some people, they are so close to pastor, they don't even know that there's something for them. That is why this message will bless your life. Knowing Jesus, bring Jesus on the scene upon your life. Bring Jesus. Look. Mark chapter 5. Here was a woman of usual of blood. Everybody was strong in, strong in Jesus. They were so crowded. And Jesus said, the woman had touched him and the sickness disappeared. And Jesus said, somebody touch me. And the disciples said, we are all touching you. He said, but somebody touch me. It's a touch of faith. You can be so familiar with Jesus to the point that his power will no longer work for you. You can be so familiar with God's servant. Highly anointed, but you won't just get anything because of familiarity. Familiarity. Knowing God is important to your life. It's important to your destiny. It's important to what you can receive, like I'll be telling you in this series of message. Everybody say experience. Experiencing. The, the one know also means to feel certain about. Feel certain about him. It's not everyone in the church that feels certain about the God they are serving. Because when the chiefs are down, some people, instead of running to God, they run into an unknown God. Gods with small g. They just run to gods, the small g. Because they are not certain about their God. It's only the people that got to know God that no matter what happened, they still run to their God. Job got to a point in his trial I believe God took Job through a process of revealing himself to Job. Because you can claim to have known God, but you may not have known him as you ought to. Job thought he had known God. The first book of Job tells us how he was righteous, he was a man that skewed evil, he was this. But toward the tail end of Job, Job chapter 42 verse 5, Job said, I've heard of thee by the hearing of the hear." He said, but my eyes see thee. My eyes see thee. My eyes now see you. May you see Jesus. May we all see Jesus more than what we see today. You see, when we see him and you get to know him, it will change your perspective about life. What you are running after will now begin to run after you. Because you are running after him that you know. But most of the time we run after things that should be running after us. For as long as you made up your mind to keep running after things, what should run after you will not run after you. God said, I am the ultimate. 
when you get to know him, every other thing that you are running after, they will be running after you. The Bible says, surely goodness and what? Mercy. Shall what? Shall follow you. They did it. God did not say you will be running after it. He said, but you will follow, either will follow you. Moses was asking for glory. God was telling him about his goodness. Malimprotu analika taya matusa analika. When you run after him, you give him a demand that what should run after you too should run after you. Most of us run after things and those things are not running after us because we have refused to run after the person we should run after. Say, for as long as you follow me as your shepherd, surely, the word surely means certainly, goodness and mercy shall follow you. Walking in the glory of newness, demand that we should run after God and get to know him. So that what should run after us also can run after us. I pray from today, I should run after God. May what should run after you also run after you. Amen. Let me hear a bigger amen. amen. God is calling us for a relationship. Be certain about. Are you certain about God? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were certain about him. They were in the face of entering into fire that could burn them. Daniel chapter 3, verse 17. Here was the fire set up. The problem was enormous. The situation was beyond something they could naturally control. And they said they should bow before the golden image. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king. He said they were not careful. No way you are not careful. When you are before the king who has the power of life and death and you are not careful to answer the king. They answered the king roughly. The Bible said they were not careful to answer the king. It means they rely on somebody. And who did they rely? They said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. When it comes to this matter, we are not careful to answer you. If it be so, our God, ever say our God, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the bony fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Verse 18 now says, but if he does not deliver us, if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. It takes being certain about whom you are serving, worshiping, to be able to answer your problem roughly. And say, no. When someone tells you, go to that man behind the scene, go to that man near the river, go and search for fortune tellers, and necromancers and the witches, they even call some white witches just to deceive. But if you are certain about him, you know him like Job said, I know my redeemer liveth. I know. Job said, even though he slays me, what will I do? I will trust in him. God is looking for believer who knows and who are certain about their maker. If we take sense about the knowledge of God, only few know God. Listen to me. God is calling us to himself. Get to know him. Where have you been the last one week? Who have you gone to for help? The Bible says, who unto him that go down to Egypt look for, to, to look for help? Is there no bomb in Gilead? 
Are there no physicians there? Listen to me, brothers and sisters. God is calling you as an individual to seek for him, to get to know him. Job said, I will trust him. Even if I die, I will still keep trusting, even in death. Now, that man was certain about God. Can we say the same thing? Because there will be a test of your certain certainty. You will be tested. You will go through pressure. Pressures of life will come. Pressures of life will make, want to make you to bow before the gods of this age. What will you do when that pressure comes? It's a sign and a determinant of your knowledge of a greater power. Listen to me. We need to search for him. We need to get to know him. And may we all know him in Jesus' name. To know also means to be absolutely certain or sure about him. It is when you are absolutely certain that you can hang your life on whatever will happen, let it happen. I know it will sort me out. And if he chose not to sort me out, I will be with him in glory. God is looking for a true Christian, a true believer, a believer with absolute knowledge about him. The word know also means to have developed a relationship with someone through meeting and spending time with him. You cannot know God without developing a relationship with him. Through meeting. Ever say meeting. When we gather together, we hear from heaven. Like you are hearing this morning. You go home to research whether those things that were spoken by this pastor is so. Knowing him, determine meeting him. May you meet the Lord. Some people came to Jesus in the book of John. When they saw the disciple, they said, look, we see, they, they use a language, say, we see Jesus. In other words, our focus is clear. We have not come to see Peter, James, and John. There is a focus. We want to see Jesus. May you see Jesus. I said, may you see Jesus. I said, may you see Jesus. It's very important for you to know that meeting him and spending time in Lagos, this is the problem of this city. People, they want things from God, but they don't want to spend time with the giver. Every pastor in every church are now crying, where are the people? Where are the people? They don't want to spend time with God in the service. They don't want to spend time reading their Bible. Having a fellowship with God in reading, meditating on the word of God. They don't want to. And God is saying that you can't walk in the glory of newness when you are far away from me. The scripture says those who are far from me shall perish. May you never perish. Amen. Psalm 84 verse 7. Put it on the screen for me. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. In other words, we appear before God. He gives strength unto us. Psalm 84 verse 11. The Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. The Lord gives grace and what? Glory. No good thing will live with all from him who walks uprightly. When you know God, he will not be told that which is yours for you. He will not hold back. He knows you need this thing. He will not hold them back because you are running after him. He will make things to run after you. I pray today in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, as you run after God, everything that needs to run after you, may they run after your life. I said, may those things run after your life. 
You cannot know God by not meeting him, by not spending time with him. Relationship is culminated when people spend time together. You discover when husband and wife have married for some time, they start looking like each other. I've seen husband and wife and I can see, it's like seeing the eyes of the woman, the face of the woman in the man and the face of the man in. You see, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, he says, as we behold the face of God, he said, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into to the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You cannot be like him if you don't spend time with him. That's why character of people are still out of order. We cannot say this is Jesus because Jesus cannot do what you are doing. That's why Christians have confused many people in the world. But you say you are a Christian, but this character is not of him. The reason is because you have not spent enough time to look like him. It's when you spend more time with him that you will look like him. So many years ago, before God showed me this scripture, I've shared it many times here. I was praying, God, I want to know you. I want to know you. And God took me into a revelation. It was a night vision. I saw a mirror before me. And my expectation was that that mirror should reflect my image. I, I was looking at the mirror. I should see myself. I have a mirror in my new office and my old office too. When you enter my office, there's a mirror. You first see yourself. I expect to see myself. And I did not see myself. Amazingly, I was now seeing another image in the mirror. And that was the image of Jesus. So the more I was very inquisitive looking at the mirror <laughs> and to find out why my body outside was changing. We all with open face, beholding everybody say beholding as in a glass the glory of God. We are changed. So God was changing me as I was looking at that image. When you spend time with him, you will be like him. You will be like him. I've seen people in this church, they just look alike. Husband and wife. Why? They are spending quality time together. The reason why many have not looked like Jesus. And people cannot say, that guy is a child of God. Because in your character, you have not looked like him. In the spirit, you are like him, but you need to make it physical. The Bible says, and the world became flesh. John 1 14. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. May you see God in his glory. May the Lord reveal himself to you. I said, May the Lord reveal himself to you. Developing the relationship. Spending time with God. Take your time. Spending time in his presence. Hearing his word. Romans 10, 17. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. Spending time developing yourself. Getting to know him. There's somebody in the mirror of the world. And that is Jesus. That is Jesus. In that revelation, I saw him. It's like lying from Genesis to Revelation. That picture that I was seeing in the mirror. It was like, was Jesus lying from Genesis to Revelation? So every episode in the Bible is about Jesus. Reading Revelation, you will see the lamb in the midst which means that is the center of gravity. That is the center of attraction for the entire world. Everybody must get to know him. May we know him. As a family man, may you know him. As a church man, may you know him. As an individual, may we all know him. 
that is the desire of God for all of us. To know means to be aware of the identity and the status of. To be aware of him. When you are aware of him, worries and anxiety will disappear. The reason why we worry and we become so anxious about our life is because our eyes is not on him or are not on him. When you know him, it takes anxiety away. It takes worries away. It takes fear of future away. The Bible says in Psalm 115 verse 12 to 14, he said, the Lord has been mindful of us. He said, the Lord will bless us. Tell your neighbor, say, God is mindful of you. And he will bless you. He said, he will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children. Can I hear a bigger amen? amen. But that comes when we run after him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Young lion, they do lack and suffer hunger. 34 10 of sand. But those who love the Lord shall never lack anything good. From today, as you follow him, may you never lack good thing. I said, may you not lack good thing. May you never lack beneficial thing. God said, look, where the robber means the rope is that many people are not following me. They are not seeking after me. They are only seeking after things. But me, they have not been seeking me. And God wants you to seek him. Seek to know him. If you know him, you will know that in him dwelleth all the fullness. Everything you are looking for is in him. Everything. He will just release it unto you because you are... Look, if somebody is my closest friend, before I think about an outsider, I will think about that person. I will think about blessing. I will think about encouraging the person. I will think about releasing my goods because that person is my closest person. God said, I have goods to give unto you. Psalm 31 verse 19. Oh, how great is thy goodness, O God, which thou hast laid off for them that love thee, which thou wrought for them that fear thee before the sons, that trust in thee before the sons of men. Everybody say, how great is his goodness. All of this comes when we get to know him. God is craving for knowledge, for you to know him. He knows you, but you see, it will not benefit you if you don't know him. God knows every one of you. He knows every one of us. God can come to you and call your name like he did in the Bible. Because before you were formed, he knew you. But most people don't know God. They are only playing religion. Help me ask your neighbor, is it religion you are playing? Or a relationship? You need to answer that. Do you know God? During this COVID, many people have said all manner of things with their mouth. On um, things that does not that they should not say. No, 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 no. When you get to know him, the Bible says, surely we deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He said, under his wing you will you will you will, you will trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You will not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that fly by day. A thousand shall fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Knowing God settles your life. May God settle you. Amen. Let me hear a bigger amen. amen. I said, may the Lord settle you. Amen. God is saying, I want my children to know me. That is the crying of the Spirit. He knows us, but many of us don't know him. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 3, toward the tail end of that verse, God said, and they know not me, fear the Lord. 
No matter what the children of Israel, they do not know him. The way they all talk. And that is similar to us today. God is still saying, I want my people to know me. Jeremiah 16, 21. Shall a man make gods unto himself? And they are no gods. Therefore, behold, I will these ones cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might. And they shall know that my name is the Lord. They shall know that my name is the Lord. Job 22, 25. Job said, Acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace. Look at your neighbor, say, acquaint, that's 22, 21, rather, of Job. Acquaint now thyself with him. Tell your neighbor, say, get yourself acquainted. Let God be your acquaintance. You have so many friends. Before you sneeze, you tell them. Before you cough, you tell them. But where is God in your life? God said, I want to be your main acquaintance. He is a friend, love it, than brothers. He is the only one that will not disappoint you. Let me tell you. He is the only one that will not run away when the chiefs are down. When you are in deep trouble, he is the only one that will say, I will see you through. I will, deli I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and I will honor you. Psalm 91 verse 15. She will be with you. So that's the only God. He's the acquaintance that is most needed. An acquaintance that is most needed is God. And he's saying, I want you to know me. I want you to know me. Make me your acquaintance. Make me your Get acquainted with him. He said, when you do that, there will be peace, tranquility, prosperity, because the word peace means so many things in your life. That's why he said, Father, things that will happen that will still be discussing in future when you know God. Job 22, 21. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. So, he said, thereby, good. Everybody say good. The good you are looking for, God said, I will make it available for you. Everybody said, good will be available for me. He said, thereby, good shall come unto thee. He didn't say you will run after the good, but good, he said, my acquaintance with you will drag goodness into your life. From today, your life will not be empty. Amen. Your destiny will not be empty. Your back account will not dry up. He said, good shall come. It's a must for good to come for people who seek after God. God said, many of us have left the main thing, the major thing for the minor thing. You are glorifying the, the minor and you neglected the major. Seek ye for the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33. And his righteousness. And all. Everybody say, all. All these things that the world are looking for shall be added unto you. And all these things shall be added unto you. God is calling someone. I don't know who is that person is this morning. You are laboring too much and getting so little. You have been frustrated for a long time because you have shifted your attention away from him. The Bible said they look unto him and were lighted and their faces were not ashamed. They look unto him and were lighted. Their faces were not ashamed. Look unto him. He does not shame people. The problem we have is that we neglected him thinking I can run my life by myself. I want to let you know today you can't run your life by yourself. You should have known by now that you have tried to run your life and you met shipwreck. What God is saying is that return. Tell your neighbor, say return. 
The Bible says, return ye backsliding children. And now we hear your backsliding. Return back to him. Return back to him. They look unto him. They were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Verse 22. Of Job 22 says. 22. 23. He said you will lay up gold. He said if thou return to the almighty. Tell your neighbor. Say God is waiting for you. If thou return to the almighty, he said, thou shall be built up. Thou shall put away iniquity far from your tabernacles. When all of these are done, then shall thou lay up. Everybody say lay up. Gold. As what? And the gold of what? Offer. As the stones of the brooks. Verse 5 says, Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. And thou shalt have what? Look at your neighbor. Say, that scripture is for me. But it comes from acquaintance. Return back. When the prodigal son returned back, what happened? The father put upon him the chiefest of all clothes. A royal robe was placed upon him. Many of us are lacking things that should be our way, normal way of life because we have not returned. Can you have meted three or four people around you say, Return back to the Almighty? Return back. Return back to the Almighty. You got to return. You know what I'm talking about. You know what you have been doing. Now, when you now, as a child of God, you sit in the seat of scoffers. Scoffers are your friend. People neglect who disdain your God. They are your friend. Scoffers. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of who? Ungodly. Psalm 1 verse 1. Or seated in the seat let me read it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of who? Of God. Nor standeth what? In the way of sinner. You know what it means to stand in the way of sinners? There's no difference between, between you and sinners. That's what it means. When people point to you, you become a signboard of who a sinner should be. Standing in the way of sinner. Now, when people see your life, there's no reflection of God there. You are standing in the way of sinner. You become a signboard. No signboard, let's say this way. Standing in the way of sinners. God said, I want my children to return. Not seated in the seat of who? There's comfort. People don't believe your God. I had a man of God saying that he liked this from 1984 when he began his journey with God. Never to make a scoffer his friend. He said, everyone around me, they honor God. They are not scoffers. They are not people that disdain God. They are not people that belittle things of God. Quite a number of people, they belittle God. When they see somebody serving God, say, ah, 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 are you the only one? Are you the one that killed Jesus? The belittle things of God. The belittle church services midweek. When they come around during the week, they don't stay. They go away. They will never come back. Belittling. Scoffers. God said it all. That is why you are in the problem you find yourself. God said, blessed is the man that does not do all of this. They don't sit. They don't stand. They don't sit. They don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't make ungodly. Someone who does not honor your God, your friend. If somebody does not honor your God, don't make that person your friend. Don't make that person your acquaintance. 
if you want the release of his grace on glory upon your life. From today, somebody will walk in glory of newness. God is sending me to you. You may not be two or more than three, but I'm delivering it to you because I want you to take it home. And there shall be a turn around in your life. Amen. I said there shall be a turn around in your life. Uzziah 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When you don't know God, you get destroyed. May you never be destroyed. Job 42, 5. I've heard of thee by the hearing of the hear, but now my eyes see thee. Because knowing God is so important, Paul the Apostle prayed a unique prayer that every child of God should pray in the Bible. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 21. Because knowing God cancels your problem in a way. It, 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 knowing God defeats that which will rise against you already by the knowledge of God. Bible says, Arise, O God, and let your enemies be scattered. Ephesians 1 20, uh, 17. Here was the prayer that Paul prayed, and it's a prayer that all of us should pray. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, whose Father is a Father who glory, may give unto you. <coughs> The spirit, ever said, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. God said, you need wisdom, you need the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of what? Revelation in the knowledge of a person that has all the fullness dwelling here. While we are here on this earth, what we need is the glory of God that Moses prayed about. And the glory of God. When God was answering him, he said, I will cause all my goodness. All my goodness. Someone here today, poverty is banished out of your life. I said poverty is banished out of your destiny. We cause all oh my goodness. And God said, He is the Father of glory. The Father. Give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Verse 18 that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, the eyes of your spirit being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. Devil never wants people to know God. Because he knows that once you know God, your problem diminishes. Because surely goodness and mercy will do what? Will. Knowing God attracts things to us. It attracts things. When you know him, things are attracted. I'm talking about God's children. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saint, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Knowing God is important. If you don't know a person, you will know what that, what that person carries. Every pastor is on an assignment. And God put upon them something for the church they are pastoring. I've seen members of this church... They will go and work out, work out, work out about. Like somebody say, where are you work out for? They work out, work out about. They will still come back. Pastor, I, I've gone to this church. I won't mention. I've gone to this church. I've gone. Eh, this is what is wrong with us. You went away because you do not know what your own pastor carried. 
No many people are going about because they don't know. They have not searched. They have not inquired. They have not gotten themselves acquainted. And after they have, they, they, instead of casting out demons, they put more demons in there. I will have to take them and cast out the demon. You see now, what you are looking for in Sokoto is right there. The Bible says in Psalm 89, verse 19, concerning Jesus, I believe it's a prophecy concerning Jesus. God has laid help upon one that is mighty. There is help for you in God. Can I hear a bigger amen? amen? I said there is help for you in God. Amen. I said there is help for you in God. Amen. He put our help in him. So when you get to know him, the problem gets loosed. I pray today, may your eyes be opened. May your eyes be opened. I said may your eyes be opened. There is a physical eye. There is a spiritual eye. That spiritual eye sees into the realm of the spirit. That spiritual eye sees the word of God the way the word of God should be seen. That was the prayer of Paul that the eyes of your understanding being a light. When your eyes is a lighting, you will know that God is not far from you. Ever say God is not far from me. Let me say this finally. In the days of Paul, despite all he knows, he was still praying because there's a lot about God to know. Philippians 3.10, Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death. Paul said, I still want to know him. Many of us know him financially. When you do like this, you know what to do. Finances come. But there's another area of your life where it's like, ah, who will deliver me from this body of this? You need to know him in that area. You need to know what to do to salvage your life from that thing that is holding you bound. Deliverance is coming to somebody here. If you are like, like that person, say a bigger amen. Jesus demanded for his knowledge from the apostles. He demanded for it. He asked them, who do men say that I am? Matthew 16, 13 to 16. And everybody kept saying, you are John. You are Eli. Look at what they say. Oh, he said, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? If somebody should ask you, who is Jesus? What will you say? Because what you know can limit you in a way. Here they were limited by calling Jesus John the Baptist. He didn't die for them. They said, some say that you are John the Baptist. So they become limited because of their knowledge. Some says Elijah, they became limited for their knowledge sake. Other says you are Jeremiah. They became limited. That is why the world is limited without the knowledge of God. And one of the pro someone said you are just one of the prophets. They became limited. And Jesus now said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Having been with me, you know me, you have walked with me, you have had my word, you have he said, who do you say that I am? God is here asking the question. Because the answer to this question will come in your time of pressure. In your time of pressure. Are you going to run away? Or you are going to stay? Jesus told the disciples in John 6. He said, look. Unless you eat my, my flesh and drink my blood. You don't have eternal life in you. Ha! This man wanted to give us his flesh to eat. They did not understand. Jesus was talking about communion. Which this coming Sunday evening we are going to take and partake as a church. He was talking about communion but they did not understand. May your eyes of understanding be enlightened. The Bible says, and many 
of the disciples who followed him departed from him. You know the amazing thing? Jesus did not call them back. Up to today, I'm still wondering why he didn't call them back. They departed. And Jesus did not say, hey, come, come back, come back. At times, there are some people you will come back and become a problem to your life. And Jesus turned to the apostles. Will you also go away? God is asking somebody. With all you are going through, your mind is thinking, shaking, shaking. Will you also go away from Christ? And Peter and the apostles said, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? For you are the only one that has the word of, of eternal life. Knowing God is a knowing endlessly eternally. He said you have the word of eternal life. God is asking you, will you also go away? Will you also depart? Will you also go away? Everything we are looking for is in him. In him dwelleth all the fullness of God head bodily. There's need for you to know him beyond religion. Beyond religion. Somebody need to take a step beyond religion and have a relationship. The scripture tells us about Enoch. Genesis chapter 5. He walked with God and the Bible says it was not for God took him. Hebrews chapter 11 told us about him that before God took him, we understood that he pleased God. And for without faith, it is impossible to please him. Knowing God is to believe in God. Knowing God is to trust in him. God is asking you, do you trust me? Do you trust me for your life? Do you trust me for your future? Do you trust me for that child that, that is coming? Do you trust me for that husband, that wife, that good job? Do you trust me? Know him is to trust him. God is calling us to a knowing. Who do you say that I am? Listen to me. You are going to begin a journey today that you have not started before. God for your salvation. But this goes beyond salvation. It goes beyond remission of sin. Though it starts from it. But God is saying I'm tired of religious people. I'm tired. God is tired of being religious without reflecting Christ. Because whom you know is the one you reflect. The fruit, is probably, they shall be known by the fruit they bear. Not by their trunk, but by the fruit. God is asking you, you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do what I say. Luke 6, that, Luke 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? A fruit, a, 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 a tree is known by its fruit. God is saying, when you spend your time with me, you will be like me. You will look like me. 1 John 3 tells us that when we shall see him, we shall look like him. I want you to know he's calling you. As a man, as a woman, as a family, to another level. The calling this morning is a calling to what? Another level. Because every knowledge of God you have takes you to another level with God. God does not judge the way man judges. Man look at outward appearance, but God judges from the heart. Are you going to make a journey this morning? Is somebody here going to make a journey this morning? If you are going to make a journey this morning, can you rise and begin to worship him now? Begin to worship him now. Begin to worship him now. Say, God, I'm ready to make a journey with you. 
a journey that will make my problem easy that will make my life a wonderful life I am asking you oh God to follow me in this journey begin to pray let me hear you pray say Lord I want to know you 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 oh to be like Jesus I want to know you Lord open your mouth and say Lord open my eyes help me to know you 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 come and sing the first song you sang during praise and worship that first song you sang can you please close your eyes and just wave your hands unto God and begin to pray in the spirit you are all the matter, Lord. I'll put you in front. Oh, yes. In front of my memory. You, you are, are all the, the matter. You are all the matter. I'll make room for two. Somebody want to dedicate his life to so Christ this morning. You are all the matter. You, you know that. Dedicate my life. Oh, I feel dry in my heart. No I want it to walk out you here. Let me pray for you. You feel like, look, oh, I need to rededicate my life. Walk, walk to this altar. I need to rededicate my life to the honor of my soul. I'm waiting. Oh, yes. Need to 